Welcome back to What Are You Thinking podcast. I'm Ron Lewis. I'm your host today, the better part, my wife, Lynette. Unfortunately, she's not with us today, but we are glad to be with you today wherever you are. And we know that today's show is going to be incredible for you. One of the finest couples whom I've ever known is here with us today. This is Tim and Tina Aquino. They live in Connecticut. And what a background they have. Let me just give you a few highlights of, of who they are. Tim is a licensed marriage family therapist. He is, uh, has, is counseling in, in New York and Connecticut and Florida and in, and with different clients around the world. So they have a global counseling, uh, spread right here. Tim's the founder of marriageworks.org. And you can look that up. It's a not-for-profit organization and builds the community of marriages that support and help one another to succeed. And that is really important. We're going to get to that with you in a minute, uh, Tim. He's a, He's got two master's degrees. One is in marriage and family. And he is a six-time full Ironman finisher. Now, this is a man's man right here, <laughs> and I've seen him at the end of his marathons, and he still looked like he had energy to do six more. Uh, well done. Now, Tina Tina is truly a remarkable, extraordinary individual. Uh, anyone who knows Tina Aquino, Aquino, she has been used to change people's thinking uh, and change people's lives. Uh, that's an understatement uh, regarding Tina. She works in political affairs at the United Nations, and that's a dream that you had when you were a child, uh, supported Under Secretary General for Political Affairs for eight years. Now she's in the Decolonization Unit, also in the Department of Political and Peacebuilding Affairs. Uh, Tina, welcome to this podcast show, and Tim, it's Thank an honor you. to be here with you, really, and you guys have a lot to share. Let's start with your background. And um, uh, you guys, uh, you met somewhere. You were probably you probably met in the Philippines. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> what was that yes. like? Your version. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your version. Yeah, we went to the University of the Philippines, and she actually is a year senior uh, than me, but we belong to the same friend group. But anyway, when I first saw okay, her... Okay, so uh, she's a year older than you. Is that a point here? Is that a, an issue? <laughs> a year in school, but actually I'm almost three years older um, oh, okay. than in him. In age, because Tim entered college at 15. Oh, Tim's one of those guys. <laughs> one of uh, those, University yeah. of Philippines is no pushover school. That's a great university, no, no, very famous. Not, yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, so you. you you went in there young. You were probably where? You, what was your field? What was your, where? Where was your expertise? Where they would let you in as a little child into a university? Where was that? And actually, when when you know when you're in high school, wanting to get into college, not really focused on what program you want to enter. So I I got into. Um, social sciences. But you were really, you were smart enough. What what, what was your, in high school, like, were you a math, math genius or were you a great scholar or a reader? Did you? <laughs> oh, wow. Good question. I, in high school, I was just, I like math. I like numbers, but not really studying uh, <laughs> and enjoying. But, you know, I had dreams. I wanted to be a doctor when I was younger. Um, but that kind of got let go and forgotten about that. So anyway, I uh, got into college, saw Tina, had a crush on her. and First first glance? Yeah, yeah, first glance. Wow. Was it, was it, you didn't know this, was it love at first sight? I just thought she was cute. Okay. So that because? Was that. Um, because of your sister. Well, and other, among other things. Yeah. All right, yeah. so that was your beginning then. And and then after that, some what happened? Yeah, so I met her first probably in 1982 when I was 15. And then we got together, became a couple in 1985. Um, I was, what, 18. Mm -hmm. And then in 1986, we got married. We were together, Tina got pregnant, and 
we decided to get. Okay, so you had a background, you have a story, you you were together, uh, weren't married. Uh, were your parents supportive of that, or did they have a problem with that? Well, they weren't very happy. Um, I would say at our wedding, our parents were crying. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they they were crying for what reason? Because we were very young. Uh, we weren't yeah. ready. We weren't ready. Um, in fact, when I found out, well, bef- I got born again before I went into college, and Tim grew up in a Christian home. But um, bef- I grew up in a private school for girls, like, Christian school, uh, nuns all the way. It's like boys are bad news. Stay Catholic away school. from them. Catholic school. And when I entered in UP, the University of the Philippines, it's a very liberal school. And I saw all this fun going on and um, saw the guys. <laughs> it's like, Lord, I'll see you later. Let oh. me go have fun. One of those, one <laughs> of those situations. <laughs> yes. Okay. And so um, when I met Tim, uh, uh, we fell in love. I think even on the first week of our relationship, he already said that um, I want to marry you um, someday. Wow. Not now, but someday. So, but unfortunately, when I found out that I had, I was pregnant, we had just broken up. So I wasn't going to tell him I was pregnant. I was just going to fight it through and, and live this, um, you know, have this child on my own, be strong and fight for us. Um, but I, the doctor that I went to see um, to confirm that I was pregnant, she said, well, if somebody's going to turn his life away mm. from a child, then he should know. Mm. So wow. uh, I, I was, there was a group thing, um, a party that afternoon that all our friends were going to, and I saw him and I just said, hey, I'm pregnant, but I don't, wanna, I don't want you to do anything about it. And I walked away. So I left him stunned there. (laughs) Um, But after a few weeks, he came around, started checking on me. Um, But between that time that he came around, I was, it was such a dark time for me. And I didn't know where to turn. I was full of shame. I couldn't tell my family. And I was ashamed you know, to go to God. And it was just so dark and it I was just spiraling downwards. And that's when I tried to take my life. Yeah. Wow. Wow. But the Lord stopped it. So, <laughs> you know, so one of the things that I think of so often are so many successful people come here to this, to this show and mm-hmm. they tell their success story. And every single time there is a story that is not a success story mm-hmm. that happened before uh, they became successful. And for you to have that moment where you were pondering and actually attempted to take your life. Um, I mean, I, I, I feel for people who go through that and we've all had our low moments, but when I look at this is really, I just look at it like this, that the devil wants to kill people mm-hmm. and he gives us thoughts. Mm-hmm. And what were you thinking? Yeah. That's 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 what this podcast is about is to mm-hmm. uh, to, to remember thoughts. Mm-hmm. It was a thought that led you down that path of destruction, but then there was also a new thought mm-hmm. that pulled you out. Yeah, um, for me, it was just that I was a disappointment, especially to my father. Um, I think of all the children, my father really built up his. Um, political dreams inside of me like you will be this you will be you're smart you'll be a lawyer you'll do this um, you'll achieve great things Um, and so and I was kind of I received a lot of attention from my dad so just the thought of him being disappointed at me really like I'm ashamed to my father I'm ashamed to my family okay so Tim you're here you're hearing this Um, from Tina, and you've heard this many times before, but when you as a therapist, um, uh, when you hear so many stories of guilt and shame, what do you think of and what's the way out professionally? And then we'll get back to Tina. Yeah, thank you. Good question, uh, Pastor Ron. Whenever we're experiencing guilt and shame, the tendency is to isolate. 
which is what Tira did at that time. Mm-hmm. So ideally, we will be intentional with being in a community because in isolation, we struggle, but in community, we heal. Mm. So that's what, in practice, when there's grief and trauma, the encouragement is your support system. And if there's there's no support system, we, we, we build the support system and look at that. Because exactly what happened to Tina was shame was pushing her into a corner, isolating herself. But then if she had somebody to talk to, mm. somebody that she could share the burden and somebody that can carry that with her. It's amazing how easy it is and how simple that is, but some people still mm-hmm. remain in the darkness. Mm-hmm. So uh, when we were, when we were children, we did, uh, all of us did this where we we would go to a rock and we turn it over, and there would be bugs down there, right? Mm-hmm. There would be that stuff. But when the light hit it, everything left. Mm-hmm. It just said, "Okay, we we can no longer hide in this darkness." Yeah. And it is so Im- it's imperative that we talk our way out Mm -hmm. and that we talk to safe people, smart people who can help us. There is no situation that is beyond the reach of God. And most situations are not beyond the reach of a friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's only God can do this. And that that's true. Mm -hmm. Uh, We talked to people who were there was no hope for them making it or no hope for them getting out of prison or certain Mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. And then God does intervene. Uh, I hear stories all the time. So, um, I mean, like you guys today, you've helped and and our audience, would you would not know, but these guys have helped thousands of people. They have helped change lives. They have helped encourage lives. They've been nothing but a great blessing. And who would have known? I, I never knew this about you until today, that you were pregnant out of wedlock, which is that happens, mm-hmm. and then you felt all this shame, and then you wanted to take your life. Yes. Now, tell us about that pregnancy. Yeah. Because this is where, this is like good things happen yes. out of mistakes. <laughs> yes. So my brother, um, who, is, who who is also a Christian, um, after I he, they found me and brought me to the hospital, because I was at that point bleeding, um, you were bleeding because you were the, because I you were trying tried to cut myself. Okay, so you you were this is your bleeding, not not the child. No, not the child. So that the attempt the attempted suicide. Yes. So they took me to the hospital, and this brother of mine just stayed by me and brought me to our neighbor, who is a Christian couple, and they ministered to me, and that's how I went back to God and um, and that's when Tim came back and said, let's do this, let's get married. Tim, how old were you when that happened? I was 18. You were 18 years old. Yeah. Now, I want to say this. Uh, as an 18-year-old um, at that time, thank you for manning up. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for being an 18-year-old man. Mm. And this is these are the great stories that happen to people and and you went. You started in the Philippines, and then at a certain point, you came over to a, and you built a, a you built a marriage. Mm-hmm. You did that, and yeah. then you guys got your faith all working in favor. Instead of it being issues of of like I feel guilt and shame, and you're always dealing with feeling sorry for yourself mm-hmm. and inward. Then you turn outward. And you say like when the minute you get a child that's born. Now, all of a sudden, you have to grow up (laughs) because that child cannot survive without you. So you're getting up in the middle of the night. uh, And and how did did you handle that in the middle of the night? Were you one of those? Did you fake it? Did you lay there (laughs) and act like you're sound asleep or did you get up and help? Well, thankfully, we had really good support from both our parents. Um, And after we got married, we actually moved in to a house, house, my brother's house, who he decided a week after we got married, they left for the States. He and his family moved to the States. And he left his house there, and all furnished, oh, uh, wow. a couple of cars and household help. Oh, two my goodness. House help, two trained nannies. A, a, it must be nice to have rich relatives. I mean, that, <laughs> what a blessing. <laughs> That's great. So you, yeah. so you guys made it through. And yeah. um, what is there anything else you want to share about this? I mean, you're... Your daughter was mm-hmm. born, yes, Samantha, yes, and 
and here's what's just crazy about this. And, and, and even though I've known you guys for almost 20 years, um, even though I've known you a long time, mm-hmm. um, I'm hearing new stories that I've never heard before right now. Mm-hmm. So, so if you're out there, this is like fresh. This is mm-hmm. nothing staged or whatever. We, mm-hmm. we, we always pray and ask God to lead the discussion. And now we're in this place right now where maybe some people are feeling mm-hmm. guilt and shame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Help your therapist, help them <clears throat> speak, <laughs> speak to the people feeling guilt and shame. Yes. It's a, I think every person has trauma grief, guilt, and shame in some form or another. Mm -hmm. And we all need help, if not professionally, even just somebody that we can approach, like I said earlier. So at that time, yes, thankfully we, like I mentioned earlier, we had good support. Actually, when my parents found out that Tina was pregnant, my dad just asked me, oh, okay, Tim, so what do you want to do? And I said, I want to marry her. So fast forward, we got married and then had good support. But going back to the guilt and the shame, we get pushed, like I said, into carrying the burden ourselves and not sharing it like your story about the rock, right? Really essential and and vital that we find somebody, find a friend, somebody that you can talk to. And I believe that that can be the first first step towards getting out of that. Okay, so that's what you guys are sticking with that that narrative and there and that's really critically important. Mm-hmm. And and I, I'm proud of you guys. What a, what a story. And mm-hmm. I, I look at you know the statement of paying forward. You know, you you guys have come out of something you were helped by others and now you are turning it around and you're the ones who are helping so many other people. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about how did you get to New York City and uh, Tina, I, w- I want you to go back in the second grade because yeah. mm-hmm. you've contributed to our book, Miracles in Manhattan, and yeah. your story uh, is is another great story of how some people had a, like a miracle story mm-hmm. in Manhattan. So let's go back to the second grade. Yeah. So when I was in second grade, um, so in the Philippines, we we learn about the United Nations throughout our education, you know, primary and secondary school. And it begins at the second grade. And my teacher um, showed a photo of the Secretariat Building of the United Nations on First Avenue. And it was this huge, impressive facade. Um, yeah, 39 floors. It goes yes. up into the sky. It's yeah. an iconic building here in New York City. Yeah, so that's what was, I, I saw that and there was just, I don't know what led me to say it, but I just said, I'm going to work there someday <laughs> in and, front of my whole class. And and that's, you know, that's amazing how children speak these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's it has a lot to do with how my father built up, you know, my 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 belief in myself that I would be in politics one day. But I think he had a different idea. It was politics, the way that he did it. But but this was, yeah, it was like international politics. But I forgot about that dream for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so what happened was uh, Tim was petitioned by a sister who was born here in the U.S. when his parents studied in Boston. And that petition, uh, family petition, lasted about, I mean, it took 23 years before the U.S. government contacted us and say, hey, you guys are up for interview for possible immigration to the U.S. And at that point, we had already built a life in the the Philippines. We had already um, prepared for our children's college education. The plan was when Tim got what turned 40 and I would be 43, we would have been done you sending. Would have been fully retired. Fully retired, fully retired at age 43. At 40. At 40 and 40 43. For me. Wow. Because we had already paid our children's college education in the Philippines. And okay. we had already, I had, I was looking forward to getting this amazing, just one of, I think I would say boldly, it's one of the best medical retirement benefits. So From the Asian Development from, Bank. From the Asian Development Bank, where I used to work in the Philippines. It's an international organization. So we were kind of set and we were looking forward to retirement and doing 
things that we love to do. And then this petition came from the U.S. Um, through the family petition. And, and we said, no, we're not going. <laughs> we're not going. The kids didn't want to go. Nobody come. wanted to Nobody leave. Nobody would want to leave because it was, we were. You were living the dream. Yeah. You had yes. everything taken care of. Yes. You were all set. Yes. We had our own home, which we designed and built. And, and so when this came to the table, Tim said, wait, you know, uh, regardless how we feel about this, we need to ask God what he wants to do. And so we asked God. Um, he fasted and prayed. I prayed. The children prayed. We now, all now prayed. I want to, I want to interject that, that you, you basically became mature people and mature Christians, followers of Jesus in a mature way. It was no uh, so for you to be praying this way. Mm -hmm. It's no longer about you. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, mm -hmm. and I think yeah. that's really good advice to give to people. Don't make it about yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your purpose will come from God. Yes. Your sometimes your dreams don't are not what you expected mm -hmm. them to be or wanted to be. I know yes. that I wanted to be a professional baseball player yeah. when I was, you know, young oh, okay. and it did not work out, you know, <laughs> and so you adjust and, and that. But at a certain point, you say, God, what is your will for my mm -hmm. life? And there's a scripture that talks about God's will being good, mm -hmm. acceptable, and perfect. And think about mm -hmm. that. Yes. A lot of things are good. Yes. They're fine. Yes. Uh, but And others are acceptable. Mm -hmm. Okay, I accept that even though whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it may not be perfect. But then the, the other word that the Apostle Paul gives is that the will of God is perfect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a perfect will. Like somebody could say, Hey, I can marry this guy or I can marry that woman. And it could be good and acceptable. Mm -hmm. But is it perfect doesn't mean two people are perfect or the marriage is perfect. Mm -hmm. But it's describing as something is like God was involved in this and you recognize the leading yeah. of God and and how significant that is. I know yes. that I'm married to a woman, my wife Lynette, and it is the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. I I I would be blind, deaf, and dumb if I didn't acknowledge that God set this up. Mm -hmm. Now, still we choose. I don't think it's fair for any believing person just to say, um, God told me to marry this person. That is not, that may be true, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that's not the best. The best is you're manning up. <laughs> you are manning up and saying, I want to marry you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do believe this is God's perfect will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at that point, he said, "No, we have to inquire of God." And I, th I think the the God really cemented his, um, you know, made it very clear to us. When on on one day I said, "God, you need to tell me. I need to hear it from. I need to read it from the Word. It has to be from my devotional reading today, and it should be in a way that it's so clear that I cannot misinterpret misinterpret it." So, I I took my devotional and I opened on the date and the word was um, God told Abraham to get his family and go to another country. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, now, now, this is like, this is so true. <laughs> and this is amazing that this begins with Father Abraham. Abraham's the spiritual father to yeah. the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians. Mm. I mean, so we're talking about the majority of the world <laughs> is looking to yeah. Abraham as the spiritual father so to speak, mm -hmm. and, and for him to just up and leave his family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, here, here I, don't, I don't know if this would make any sense around the world, but, but to Americans, as we say, okay, he was told to leave his kindred family and country. That's KFC. Uh, you have to leave your KFC, <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken, <laughs> and go to the promised land. So, you know, so this is where the reality is, is that you get this download from God mm -hmm. about following this footsteps of Abraham to yes. leave your country, leave your background, leave your family. Was that shocking to you? Yes, uh, it was. It wasn't shocking because they were already, revel you know, we were people were praying for us and we were um, during our prayer times, we felt it. You're sensing that. But yeah. that was like what cemented it. And when I shared it to my family, the children, we all just cried. Wow. Um, and Tim said, I'm making the decision. So your daughter, Samantha, your firstborn, uh, yeah. how old was she when, when you guys made this decision? <laughs> she was 20. 
She was no, 20. I think 19. When okay. we started with, yeah, the, when yeah, we started with the, process. the process. Okay. It was 19. So she was still a teenager yeah. uh, then. And, and so. But she did say, I'm 19. I can make my own decision. And there you Jim go. said, What did you say? No, I'm making the decision. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You're manning up again. <laughs> but yeah, no. But look, look at what's happened to yeah. her. I mean, she I was, is married to like a great young man. They met in our church yes. mm -hmm. in New York City. Yes. This is like one of these many love affairs, so to speak. Yeah. And 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 she's Filipino background. He's um, Anglo. Amer he's a, he's an American white guy. <laughs> and now you guys have a beautiful granddaughter named Rain, yes. who is the cutest, most beautiful little six-year-old now. Is she, is she six? Is. Five, five and a half. Five, five and, and a half. half, yes, yes. Greatest little grandchild yeah. ever. I mean, really beautiful. Yeah. Well, except for my grandkids. You know? <laughs> <laughs> of course, yes. What's amazing is, um, you know, this the, the just seeing how Rain um, loves God, it's, it's seeing the fruit of... It, just seeing this that stark darkness of where I was and um, after 30 years of getting married of being married we realized what how how much the enemy saw I mean maybe he did not know but he he just wanted to snuff out but my life but there is this whole legacy of 38 years and this beautiful grandkids we have another one in the Philippines her name's Amaya oh yeah by Joshua, our son, your son. Joshua, Joshua yeah but um, I just want to share Pastor on uh, that day that I re on, on on our 38th anniversary it's 37 oh 37. See, I'm advanced. <laughs> so on our 37th year anniversary, we were celebrating. Um, God reminded me that 37 years ago, 38 years ago, you took, you almost took your life. And the enemy, this is what the enemy has tried to take away from you. You actually saw a picture or something, right? God showed me my hand, my wrist, where I had cut myself. And it was juxtaposed to this table where we had just celebrated our 37th anniversary and God said see this is what your story is this is um, your testimony the enemy tried to snuff out all of that this amazing life that you have now with me and your children or your grandchildren know me and so and God said I just felt in my spirit that this was a story that needs to be shared but just one very amazing fact Pastor Ron I want to share on that day um, that I finally shared this story with my children it oh, was they a, did not know they did not know Until all of these years so we only found the, that's when I felt the the that I, I, the children would be ready to receive this mm -hmm. story and wow. and that day that I told Sam about this that night Rain told her that mommy I want to be a Christian I want to receive Jesus in my life and I know that's not a coincidence I know that God was just showing even more his goodness I mean this is so powerful um we I know that as counselors and therapists you understand generational curses and generational blessings mm -hmm. and what I see here is that you have broken the curse you have bro yeah and it's we know who who did this i mean this is jesus christ went to the cross and the bible says that when he went to the cross he became a curse because moses wrote that cursed is he who hangs on a tree and so that cross was made of a tree mm -hmm. and jesus died and at that point, the generational curses have been absorbed and taken away because of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Yes. And for you to stand in that gap, so to speak, stand in there and say, okay, I, you know, I almost took my own life. And then for you to hold up your grandchild, your daughter, your son, your grandchildren, and little rain saying, let's turn to Jesus on that day. This is like, what a story. Yeah. Only God. <laughs> Only God, indeed. Can we just thank the Lord? I, I, I just like wanted to, <clears throat> I, don't, I just wanted to clap and just, yeah, come on. <laughs> clap, come on.
I mean, really, yeah. We have a couple people working here, and they're they're smiling and clapping too. So, um, what a moment! I mean, praise God. And um, you know, for you, you guys out there who are on the dark side, there's light at the end of the tunnel, and there is redemption, and that is truly a gift that Jesus Christ redeems lives, mm-hmm. redeems people, mm-hmm. and changes their trajectory, changes it from darkness to light, from confusion to peace, from poverty to abundance, from confusion and mental illness to peace of mind and joy of heart. Mm-hmm. And it, of course, it's not always that simple, and it wasn't like simple for you guys. Um, a lot of times parents are trying their best to be good parents, but they give sometimes give bad advice Mm -hmm. or try to pigeonhole, as we say, they try to, uh, make their kids a certain way Mm -hmm. going after a certain field. Of course, all of us want our kids to be the best in class Mm -hmm. and doctors, lawyers, software engineers, (laughs) baseball players, (laughs) baseball players. Right. (laughs) So of course, but the reality is God has a unique plan and a mm-hmm. path for everyone. And mm-hmm. so I want to just invite you guys today to to know God, to get to know God and to find your purpose, discover your purpose in life. And it all begins with prayer. It's a simple mm-hmm. prayer. Mm-hmm. Tina, would you say a little prayer for yes. people uh, today who are out there and you know that there's people who are in the same situation that you were in years ago? They're, they're dealing with that right now. Mm. Can you speak briefly and then say a prayer? Yeah. Um, so I, when I was in that dark place, I really felt like I was spiraling down. Like it was a dark sea that I was just going down and down, and I I could feel the life getting out of me. Like I couldn't breathe, and it was so scary because it was a place where God was not there. But but God just put his hand through and pulled me out. And that is God's heart really is. He wants you to know that he is your hope and he is real and he can turn your life around. That beyond this darkness, if you call out to him, he will come, he will rescue you and he will give you the amazing life that he has prepared for you beyond what you can imagine, ask or think. And so, Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much, God, that you truly never let us go. Even when we tried to go our own way and just wanted to, yes, this is my life. I will do what I want, God. It always brings us to a place of of isolation from you, a place that is so dark that we end up not having hope to the point that some of us feel like taking our lives is the right and the only way to go. But God, you said no. And so, Father, you are kind and gracious, merciful. You have forgiven us all of our sins even before we committed them. And you are so committed, God, to rescue us. And you proved that by spilling, uh, by sacrificing your son so that he will pay for all of our sins so that we can be rescued and reconciled to you. And so, God, I just pray for any person there and everyone, Lord, who are in a very dark place right now and they're thinking of ending their lives and and see no hope. I pray, God, that your mighty hand would stand, would extend, God, come down from heaven and Pull them out of the darkness, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. May they breathe in your life, God, that their very thought of God help me is their lifeline and you will come through. You will come. You said, if anyone calls on your name, you will answer. If anyone knocks on the door, you will open. And so, Father, rescue them right now. Let them grab hold of your hand and pull them out, Lord, into the air and to breathe in your life. Pull them out into the light that they may see that there is hope and there is beauty and there is power and an amazing life designed and purposed by you. 
that is prepared for them, God. And I thank you that this is what you do and this is what you want to do for each and every person who is crying out, Lord, in the darkness. I thank you and I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amazing. And and and, and your thoughts have been so radically changed and yours can be too. You're not as defeated as you think you are. Mm -hmm. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have an abundant eternal life. Mm -hmm. And that's what God has for you. And you can begin to believe that right now. And you change your thoughts and you'll change your life. And God is on your side and he's for you and not against you. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is that you've done or whatever you feel fears for or whatever's going on in your life, we know that God is with you and he can help you change that beginning right here and right now. Mm. Today is the day of salvation where a savior who came and was born in Bethlehem and he lived the life we could not live, the beautiful, abundant, pers personal, beautiful life. He, Jesus loved the children, he loved people, he loved the outcasts, uh, he loved everyone. And, and it's remarkable. And 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 he, he lived that life and then he died on the cross. We talked about that. And then three days later, to 500 eyewitnesses, historical reality, Jesus rose from the dead and he's alive today and he's standing right there with you. <laughs> Thank you very much again for sharing your incredible story, both of you guys. But mm -hmm. before we move on to Tim here, we have we do have a few more minutes. And before we do, let me say that, that Tina, you... You stepped into our life in a very personal way. Uh, my wife, um, uh, my wife Lynette, was had a, a disease and had uh, endometriosis and could not have children. And when that happened, um, we started exploring other other options for her to have a baby and surgeries and all kinds of things like that. And still wasn't happening. And so some of her best girlfriends gathered around her and threw her a baby shower when they knew that she could not have children. Now, that to me does not make sense. <laughs> but this is where faith becomes a different reality. Faith fills in the gap that is impossible. And, and faith is always there with us, but a lot of times we have to exercise it. So you ladies, exercise your faith Mm -hmm. on behalf of Lynette to have a have a child by saying we're going to throw her a baby shower and this is to me is like it you I, you could call it like a fake baby shower or a <laughs> or a or you could call it a faith baby shower yep. <laughs> and and you may have felt fake but but for these women they were believers yes they were fighting for her yes and so when you went to make a purchase for a baby shower where there was no baby <laughs> when you did that what was yeah. that like so i was in the, i was in this store and i saw these two um christmas bibs no there i saw a, this bunch of Christmas bibs. And okay, they, a Christmas bib for a baby. A bib. For a baby, yes. Yeah. A baby, wearing wearing a, bi a bib so a, that they don't yeah. vomit one more time on their <laughs> cute little Christmas yeah. Easter so outfit. So these are bibs um, and they had um, Christmas tree with sparkles in it. And, and I just sensed, you know, I felt like the Holy Spirit was whispering to me. I felt like, okay, get two of those for Lynette. So you feel like the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, whispered to your heart to yes. buy two of those, not one, but two for two. Lynette. Yes. Were they because, matching? Yes, because we had already been in faith with her and we were believing and praying that she would have twins. So, um, so when I sense that in my spirit I was like Lord this better be you I is this you because this is too scary um I don't want to cause her any pain but you know you have to really <laughs> like I had to get that assurance it was um from God because and I felt it very strongly so I went ahead and purchased those two this was in springtime but those were those Christmas bibs and mm -hmm. so I gave them to Lynette and I said, this is for your babies. And and all of you ladies gave her different gifts. Yeah, many and, friends gave the, her gifts. Yeah. Did, there was, seems like there was one other woman who brought 
two two of something. Two also. Um, two others. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't remember what they were. Yes. Yes. They were pacifiers, rattles, <laughs> milk bottle. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. anyway. Yeah, I think Lynette may have re- received these gifts from different on different occasions. Okay. Yeah, and so mine was here in New York um, in springtime, and so and after. Five years, I think, Pastor Ron. About four years later. Four years about later. About four years later, there there came an announcement. It was a very sudden thing that happened, and that yes. is we were asked it to be the parents of twin girls who mm-hmm. had no parent that did not have parents and was put up instantly, mm-hmm. that they would be put up instantly for adoption. And and just nine days before they were born, uh, we we were told that it looks like we would be the parents of these twin girls, sight unseen. And um, and so, uh, what happened on, on? They were born on Christmas, December twenty fifth. This is true story. You can't make it up. And and we went out in the garage of our home and fa- looked for those Christmas bibs, and we put them on. And you can see this picture now if you're watching on the video version mm-hmm. here. These are these are the twin girls in those bibs that you purchased for them. Yeah, you purchased for them, Tina. Thank I you. mean, that took guts and courage and faith yeah. to do it. And they Thank were you. born in a town in a city called. They were born just outside of Bethlehem, <laughs> here in the United States, not Bethlehem. <laughs> wow, not Bethlehem in the Middle East, but Bethlehem here. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a lot of Bethlehems yeah. in the United States. Yes. Out of the 50 states, there's probably a Bethlehem because Bethlehem is such a, it means house of bread, mm-hmm. and it's a special place where Jesus was born, and the prophet Micah even prophesied hundreds of years before Christ was born, that the ruler would come from Bethlehem. He's being the, the lineage of David, the King David. So we know that Jesus uh, was was born in Bethlehem. These mm-hmm. girls were born on December 25th. And Lynette had to go back out and find out. And the reason they were in our garage, they were in the garage in our North Carolina home, is things that end up in the garage will either be thrown away, given away, or sold in some yard sale. Mm. And and that's when Lynette said, I think we still have those little gifts. And, and the reason they're in that garage is Lynette had given up hope. Mm. Wow. And she will tell this story when she's here another time. Mm. Uh, when she's here with me, she's the co-host of this podcast. And and but I have her green light to share share that you did this, Tina. You did this, and you were such an inspiration. And and uh, we're very grateful. And let me give you this picture of the girls today. This is a recent picture of them, and they're beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful yeah. twin girls. And and one of them actually even resembles me, and we 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 laugh about that a lot. They know their story, and they're comfortable with their story, yeah. and it's a precious story. And I'm yeah. glad that we could be there on the day they were born, and the and the woman who gave birth to them. We hugged, we kissed her on the forehead, we thanked her, and she said, "This is the way it's supposed to be." Mm, wow. And so we're just thankful, we're grateful. Um, for you and your faith. And this is what I'm saying when I talk about Tim and Tina Aquino. They are not just ordinary people. They're not just ordinary Christians, just not ordinary successful people, but they have gone the extra mile. And because of what they have had to deal with in their past, they now have a, a future mm-hmm. and a present moment where you've helped all these people. Mm-hmm. So let's, uh, anything else? Yes, I think I just want to connect the UN story because you asked why the UN, right? How I ended it back in the UN. Sure. And it was, um, so we had already uh, decided, yes, we were going to go to the United States, move to the United States. And I was asking the Lord, where do you want to take us? Where in the U.S.? Because we had family in the West Coast. And uh, at that time, Tim and I were studying um, Christian ministry in our church and uh, one of the classes was about uh, your, your mission to the world. And our teacher said, okay, pray for where the Lord, which country the Lord wants to take you. And it was not a country for me. It was the United Nations. So I... Wow. Which is like an assignment to the world. Assignment mm-hmm. to the world. It's yes. amazing. Yes. <laughs> and so um, I, by faith, we said, okay, the United Nations is in New York. That's where we're going. So we came to New York without a job at the UN yet. And Tim was just, he was 
you know, if God tells you to go there, we'll go there and he will take care of us. And then I, we both. Once again, he manned up. <laughs> he did it, bro. <laughs> yeah. Letting so, your wife have her dreams. I mean, that, I don't want to miss that point right there because this is some men get stuck in their vision and their calling and, and all that. And they leave their wife behind. But thank you mm. once again. No, we went to, we came together and we said, Lord, um, I want, I want to break three months. I don't want to work. And he said, Lord, I don't want to work for three months. So for three months, we were just moving around, going places. And after three months, I got my first job. Um, just not yet in the UN, but after a month, I got my first job in the UN. And that's, it's still where I work until today. Yeah. And, and you, you've, I've been with you in the UN. Um, and by the way, we're all part of the, a beautiful church together here in Manhattan called Every Nation. New York City, everynationnyc.org. And we invite anyone who's watching and listening, come and meet the Aquinos, come and meet them. They're worth it uh, just to meet them. Um, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you both. And I know that you have extraordinary stories and you can get the book Miracles in Manhattan and read your story there. Uh, the time that you, um, uh, the Secretary General Kofi Annan, a very popular uh, Secretary uh, General in the United yes. Nations, extremely popular. It seemed like everybody really, really liked him. Yeah. Uh, he was a very powerful man. And mm -hmm. you you had a moment mm -hmm. where God led you to pray a blessing over him mm -hmm. and he received it and he yes. was grateful for it. And that's been your story to, and you've worked with peacekeepers mm -hmm. who nearly lost their lives in Afghanistan and the Golden Heights mm -hmm. and many places. Uh, Tina, you've been just an all around hero. Uh, yeah. So we need a nickname for you, like Wonder Woman or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so let's go over to you, Tim. Uh, Tim, you're the silent partner here and uh, yet you're the leader. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do you lead a strong wife like you do? <laughs> a lot of prayer. <laughs> no, I thank God for Tina because I think God speaks to me through her. Um, and you know, we've been married for 37 years. And going back to just how that all started with her getting pregnant and giving birth to Sam and then to Josh, you know, looking back, just thinking about God's faithfulness because we, uh, we often say, really, by God's grace, only that we're here. But we're so thankful, even the decision to move here. I know Sam was resistant in the beginning, um, but I think about five, seven years ago, she said that, thank you. Yeah, and then uh, even for Josh, Josh was, when we moved here, I think the concession was that, okay, we'll go, but after school, after college, can we make that our decision, whether we, go, we wanna go back to the Philippines? And I said, we said, yes, sure, that's your decision. So he tried it here, wanted to be planted, um, yeah. but his heart was really in the Philippines. Anyway, I'm mentioning that because God really had the purpose because he met Gabby, our, our daughter-in-law, and now they have Amaya. So yeah. we could see God was really moving even in our children's lives. Mm -hmm. And now with even the prayer for our future children-in-law, being answered by God, by having mm -hmm. God-fearing, God-loving yeah. children-in-law in Jonathan and in Gabby. Yeah, so and very thankful parents for Parents-in-law, we prayed for those yeah, two. And our, <laughs> we call them Balae in the Philippines, the, Philippines, the, yeah. the parents of our children-in-law. Yeah. We, we prayed for that too, that we'll have great relationships yeah. with them. And, and we, we do, do with great. Terry and Barry, with Arnel and That's Rola. great. So both. if they're watching now, we yes. want to send our love. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, yeah, so going back to here and just being in the marriage, uh, you, have, you, have, you had asked me about how I can lead a, a strong woman of faith. Uh, we're, well, and then also, well, we walk together and we believe yeah. together. Yes. Um, have you guys spent a lot of time like discovering each other's um, gifts and desires and things like that? You know, they have all these books on, you know, what is your love language love and language, what is yeah. your personality type and things like that. We know the love languages, but we're actually, we have a, uh, we're setting up that part where we find our strengths. Um, we're setting it up with Neil, our friend. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do that, <laughs> but we haven't done it yet. So. Yeah, but you have all <laughs> kinds of tools and, yes. and things in your counseling, um, in your ca counseling clinic, and you have a nonprofit, then you also have the re uh, Redeem. Yeah, Redeem Wellness Center. Redeem Wellness Center. Yeah, so you're, you're, qu you're quite... Um, accomplished um, Thank you. In, in what you do and the skills that it takes to listen to people. 
as many people have said, you have two ears and one mouth. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should live that way where you listen more than you talk. Yes. And, and a good counselor does that. Yeah. They listen and they absorb pain and mm-hmm. they help people. Tim, there's a, a stigma that's still around even after all these years in the mm-hmm. with the people of God worldwide that they don't need a counselor because they have Jesus mm-hmm. in their life. Can you break that down a little bit and tear back the stigma of somebody who's going to counseling. It should be, it should not be hidden. It yes. should be more of a, ex, not just accepted, but even celebrated that somebody has enough humility to go get help. Yes, yes, thank you. Very good question, Pastor Ron. And just a bit of uh, a piece of information. So I am a mar- licensed marriage and family therapist. We've been married for 37 years. But we actually are going to be in marriage therapy, marriage counseling, Tina and I. Soon. Are you going to get you going to go get your uh, therapy together? Yes. 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 Because I. Well, it's about time you guys get it all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because we all yeah. can benefit from therapy, yes, yes. Yeah. from counseling, individual mm-hmm. couples, yes. mm-hmm. uh, couples. When I I mean couples. Dating or considering marriage, mm-hmm. pre-marriage, yeah. uh, marriage. Yeah. It's it's. I need to practice what I preach, and I recommend therapy for everybody because I believe that we will all benefit. Now, a great thing is with the with more awareness of mental health and emotional well-being. Mm-hmm. Um, there's I I can say there's less way less stigma now on therapy and and. And constantly. it's true. It's mm-hmm. true. It's mm-hmm. coming out of the closet mm-hmm. uh, now in, a, in the most positive way. Mm-hmm. And so you know, let me speak real briefly to mm-hmm. Christian leaders and thinkers. Yeah. And that is that none of us are beyond getting help. Yes. We all need help. Yeah. Um, we, no one is self-made mm-hmm. or self-managed. Mm-hmm. And we love the fact that you're doing well on your own. However, yeah. There will come things that that could happen mm-hmm. in your life, yeah. in your mm-hmm. journey, mm-hmm. in your chemicals, yes. in your and and the the scripture is really good that it uh-huh. teaches us that God loves our spirit, soul, and body, mm-hmm. that we're not devoid of our body, our physical body, yes. our mind, our mm-hmm. brain, yeah. our brain. And there's so many things that are coming out now, and we have others who will be on the podcast, and 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 they're experts on mm-hmm. these particular areas, body, mm-hmm. soul spirit, their mind, and it all affects everything. And emotions are mm-hmm. are important. And, mm-hmm. and a lot of times who are f- those who are faith people, we are taught to, to ignore our emotions. I understand that. Yeah. We can't live mm-hmm. stuck in our emotions, anger mm-hmm. or uh, fear, or mm-hmm. we can't live there forever. We have to overcome these mm-hmm. things and push back on these things. Mm-hmm. But I think it's important to know that God, God gave us emotions yeah. and he wants us to experience the best and sometimes tears are our way forward there's yes. there's yeah. chemicals in yes. tears that are that light up the happy hormones yes. Yes. That when we cry we feel better yes. and i'm here i'm a man talking about that i don't it's not like i break down and cry every day when you watch a movie or mm. you know whatever it's it, yes of course but it's it's okay to be a man and yes. to cry it's yes. be a man and yes. get counseling yes. be a man and yes. go through therapy it's mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. Yes. you're an iron man <laughs> right, let's talk about that for a second because our time's about out. You you finished multiple marathons. Yes. H- how many? The standalone marathons, I think seven. Seven marathons. Not counting the marathons within the Ironman. Right. We no that we're not that's separate. Okay. <laughs> that's separate. Okay. So when 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 you use the word six full yes, Iron Man Iron Man. Uh, mm-hmm. what does it mean full? Uh, it's two point four mile swim. Okay, so it's a t- a nearly a two and a half mile swim. Swim, right? Yes, 112 mile bike ride. 112 mile bike ride. How long does that take? Usually six and a half, seven hours for okay. me. Okay, seven hours. Okay, yeah. six okay. and a half, seven hours. So for I've me, done that'd, it in be, six. that'd be seven weeks yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you're, and then you get to your run, and then a marathon, full blown marathon. Yes. So if the swimming doesn't take you out by the sharks or whatever. <laughs> I bet if you're like Jesus, you're just going to walk on the water. You're just going to tread. You're just gonna... Yeah, if I can. <laughs> the Incredibles. Uh, no, but so how long does that take when you, on average? We're you? given 17 hours to finish. So the race starts at 7 a.m. and you have to finish by midnight. Uh, but we train six, seven months prior to the race. 
So for me, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I would say middle pack uh, triathlete. I would finish around 12 and a half, 13 hours. Which is amazing. Uh, have I ever told you how much I admire you? <laughs> Thanks. That's I, and I've seen you come in after races and you go right to church as if you just walk 10 blocks. I mean, you, you don't look beat up. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> honestly, to be here in the New York City, uh, New York City, and we, we watch the marathon. We watch it from our apartment, but then we also go down mm-hmm. into the streets where yeah. they're running. And there are people who pass out, drop out, mm-hmm. uh, get drug off, paramedics come. Um, ambulances, all of that happens mm-hmm. at a typical marathon. Mm-hmm. But you, you, you like, did you even get a blister? <laughs> well, no, I've had my fair share of injuries. I've uh, walked 10 miles to the finish. Um, but so you do what it takes. Yeah. I've thankfully, I've not, not finished the race. Yeah. That, you made it in time. I mean, 12, 13 hours is, uh, is extraordinary. Yeah. Tina, are you proud of your husband for that? I am. I yes, mean, I, yes. I'm kind of blown away uh, by yes. it, real seriously. Yes, I mean, I thank am. you. That's, That's a, why I always talk about it. He's the one who's like, don't talk about it. It's like, no, it's, it's important. I know that my son, Nathan, has done that before. And, and he was most concerned because he was in Scotland mm. and the, the waves oh. were really high. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he said he had that thought that he's not going to make it. And, uh. You know, you have these thoughts when you're like, you know, and again, what are you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? That's the biggest, for many triathletes, I think that's the biggest challenge is open swimming in open water because you don't see anything. So that's where... We really have to be <laughs> strong in the mind. So what do you think when you're in the what water? I, what am I thinking? I'm thinking get out, finish, swim as fast as you can so you can get out of the water quicker. <laughs> and that buoy thing you said? Oh, yeah. This is, I want to trademark this, but I'm going to share it. I, 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 use it I use it in my practice too with just an encouragement. When, when we get overwhelmed with things, right? It can be relationships. It can be... A whole uh, vast of concerns with money, with any anyway. Um, Stress is everywhere, yeah. so, especially in New York City. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we feel like we're drowning. It's so overwhelming. I I, I often share this story where, because for an Ironman swim, it's two point four miles, and what I do is well, I think what every triathlete does is you go to the race venue, and swim the swim course, bike the bike course, and run the run course, so you get familiar with the with the race. Before, so yeah. in Lake Placid. The town of Lake Placid is sits uh, above Mirror Lake, which where the swim is. So when you're, when that's your perspective, it looks like oh, easy swim is gonna be, no problem. <laughs> but you when you get into the water and you see how far it is, man, can I do this? <laughs> It's a long way. It's a long way. I mean, really, I, I swam one one mile when I was getting my lifeguard credential, like, uh, uh, you know, many years ago. Uh, but even that, like the end of that mile, I thought, how can I go any further? I mean, that's really remarkable. Yeah. So what I've learned is, um, I'll, because when you think about 2.4 miles, it's overwhelming. I, but I think also with the guidance of one of my coaches, uh, Look to that because the race is marked by buoys every 100 meters. Oh, that's great. Right. So I focus on the first buoy and not even think about all of that. I swim to that. When I get to the, that buoy, let me swim to the next buoy. And then the next buoy. I'm not worrying about all of the uh, other external factors. And it, it's so helpful to even with life when it gets overwhelming. I know there's recently Tina was thinking about a lot of these things that she has to do. And I said, okay, honey, I want to share with you something. And I shared it with her. Hopefully it was helpful. But for me, and even in the clients that I've worked with, that's been something that they go to when things are overwhelming, when you're so busy, okay, what's one thing I can focus on? And then another one, and then another one. Tim, this is a great way to to, to end this this podcast. I wish I could sit here for four more hours and, 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 hear more of your stories uh, you guys are very rare and very rich Thank people you. you're very rich in in so many ways and you have wisdom from god and even that that's a great way to end this because jesus said it like this that don't worry about tomorrow mm-hmm. for tomorrow has enough cares of mm-hmm. its own mm-hmm. and so 
what he's saying is just own your moment right now. Yes. Look at the buoy mm-hmm. at the next hundred meter mark. Mm-hmm. You can make it that far. And so this is a great way to end. And thank you for joining us uh, today until we meet again. Uh, have a great, great thought, <laughs> a happy thought that God loves you and he's on your side. Thank you.